As we kick off this new year, uh, a question I ask, or at least maybe we should all ask ourselves is, how are we engaging with each other in our, in our church capacity, you know, on site and even off site, how are we engaging with one another throughout the week? Um, one of the places that we set up for this type of engagement to maximize not only how we serve each other, but also how we can pour into one another and be a closer knit you know, family is our serve teams, our missionary team. Uh, so the question I would ask you is, are you on a missionary team? Uh, we have so many options and so many teams. So if, if you're wondering, it's like, well, I don't know what my gift is.
Good morning. Welcome to the Ridge. You guys stand up and sing with us this morning. morning and welcome to the ridge we are so glad that you're here with us today my name is julie and um i just want to start off this morning with um just praying and praying that god will bless this time together and bless um us as we are worshiping through song and through listening to bobby preach um that he will just speak to our hearts and open our hearts to whatever it is that he may want to say to us today so dear god i just thank you for this opportunity to be here to be able to proclaim your name, um, to be able to hear your word. I thank you, and I pray that this is something that we never take for granted, God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving us so much that you that you died on the cross for us, Father. Thank you for, thank you for everything, amen. storm surrounding me, let it break, and at your name and still, and call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave, and at your name, and Jesus, Jesus, you make the 
Unravel me with the melody. You surround me with the soul of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears are gone. I'm no longer to stay in the field. I am a child of God. I'm no longer to stay. 
that again. perfect love casts out all fear. Jesus, we thank you that you've once and for all conquered sin and death for our, for our salvation, for our peace, for our joy. a global scale, on a national scale, even on a personal scale, things sometimes just seem to be unraveling around us, and fear can creep in, but God, help us to stand firm in your love, that perfect love that casts out all fear. We thank you, Lord, that you give us your love generously and graciously. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. All this is for you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. Thinking about joining one of our missionary teams? Well, this one, it fires me up every time I get to talk about it. Rich kids, uh, will you help serve our children to help make disciples of Christ? Will you teach them the gospel? Will you help them to just have someone to love and care for them on a Sunday and really throughout every day of their lives. It's primarily our babies up to fifth graders and uh, we need volunteers that would be willing to partner with and serve our children, but it's also a very dynamic and loving team. This missionary team cares for one another, they celebrate together, they do life together. So please join us as a part of our Rich Kids missionary team Text the word SERVE to 865-276-8107 and let's engage with one another as we make disciples with our children, of our children, and seek to see the gospel just implanted in their lives so that they would live it out faithfully and fulfill the, God's, uh, the, the call that God has put on their lives.
How are we doing? Ah, good, good, good. Well, hey, it's great to see you guys. My name is Bobby. I'm one of the pastors here at the Ridge Church, and we're so glad that you're here with us uh, together this morning. If you're here in the room, welcome. If you're watching online, we're glad that you're tuning in online uh, as well. Hey, uh, do me a favor really quickly. If today is your first Sunday here, or uh, if you have a prayer request, or is there something, uh, something that you want to uh, connect with us on, uh, we have a couple of different ways that you can do that. First of all, if today is your first Sunday here at Ridge Church, or your first Sunday uh, tuning in online together, uh, send us a text. Uh, Wesley mentioned the serve text. So if you're interested in serving in, in Ridge Kids or any of our uh, missionary team ministries here at Ridge Church, even if you're like, I don't know exactly what to do or, or like where I need to be involved. Like if you want to serve, uh, send the word serve to 865-276-8107. Uh, but if today is your first day here at Ridge Church, instead of serve, send the word hello. And you'll get a text message back and There'll be a link in that text message. You just click that, follow the instructions there really quickly, some simple information, just an easy way for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us, and we can communicate back and forth through uh, text there. But uh, if you don't want to do the text thing, there's a couple of other ways. You can grab a Connect card on your way out at Ridge Central, table right outside these doors, uh, or just go to ridgechurch.info and uh, fill out our online Connect card there. So if you have a Bible with you, open it up to Luke chapter 5. Together, that's where we're going to hang out uh, today in uh, the end of this series that we started a few weeks ago called Beyond the 52. Uh, if you didn't bring a Bible, we'll have it on the screen uh, here behind me, or you can use your Version Bible app. Uh, you just click on uh, more and then events, and all of today's notes and scripture will be right there uh, for you to follow along with uh, together with us. But we started this series a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we really are centering this around this one simple question, one that I hope that you have been uh, thinking about. It's, it's one that I've been thinking about for 12 years now, uh, but it's something that I want us to, to really center on this year because I want to make sure that, that we actually do something about it. It's not just something that, that we're talking about, but it's actually something that we're doing something about. And the question is simply this. If Ridge Church ceased to exist, would anyone notice? If our church ceased to exist, if we just went away, would anybody even notice? Or would anybody even care? You know, this, uh, this question, the origin of this question comes from uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, C.H. Spurgeon, back in the, the middle of the 1800s. And the church that he pastored in London, England was called Metropolitan Tabernacle. And he pastored that church for 38 years uh, there in London. And one of the things that they did to make an impact in their community is they started a large orphanage, uh, orphanage for boys and did extensive community service for the poor and the homeless in London in the mid 1800s. So much so, they, they were doing so much serving, they were doing, they had such an impact on the city of London in the mid 1800s that a reporter for one of the local news publications there wrote of Metropolitan Tabernacle and what Charles Spurgeon and their church was doing and said this. They said, if Metropolitan Tabernacle ceased to exist, the city of London would mourn because they were no longer there serving the city. That's powerful, isn't it? That, that for uh, somebody to think, for the community to think of a local church and say, they're doing so much in the city, they're doing so much for the people here, they're serving and having such a great impact here, that if they were no longer here, we would mourn at their absence. The impact on the city was so tremendous, and that's how great of an impact the church was having on their community, and that's the type of impact that we want to have on our community as well. You know, when we started the Rich Church, it was, it was birthed out of that same desire to have such a deep impact on our community. The needs in our community and the places where we live, work, and play, uh, they're, they're tremendous. They're great. Like we don't, we've talked about that for the last couple of weeks. You don't have to look very hard or very deep into your own neighborhood, community, or where you work, or where you go to school, or, or just in your, your friend group, or even family, to see that there are needs that exist right there in front of us. And there's no way 
There's no way that, that just us as a, a church leadership or just one church in and of itself could, could meet all of those needs alone, but we can do for a few what we wish that we could do for all. We can always do for a few what we wish that we could do for all. And so you can meet a need, and I can meet a need, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Like, like we can all, and those of you watching online, like we each individually, we can meet those needs individually and with groups of other people. And the way that we're going to do that, we've talk, we mentioned this last week, but the way that we're going to do that is uh, through an initiative called Dollar Club Go. And it's a, a brand new way for us to do Dollar Club. You know, for about five years, we've done Dollar Club, and, and through Dollar Club, every first Sunday of the month, we've just said, hey, uh, everybody give a dollar above and beyond your normal giving the first Sunday of every month, and we take all of those dollars. We don't keep a penny of that here in the church, and it all goes out to serve and meet immediate needs in our community. And, and you guys have, have given tremendously to Dollar Club over the last five, five years. Literally thousands, tens of thousands of dollars have been given and given away to meet needs in our community. But we've only been able to meet like one or two needs a month through that method. And so our idea through Dollar Club Go is for us to still give to Dollar Club, but then for all of that money to go right back to you to fund the projects to meet the needs that you see around you and that you can do that with other people around you as well and so to have the impact on our community that we desire you and I have to serve the needs that we see the things that that move you and leverage the resources that you have right in front of you in your own hands where you live work and play now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the technical name of our church is actually not just the Ridge Church, but the technical name of our church is actually the Ridge Community Church. How many of you knew that? Anybody? A few of you? Okay, a few, that's, that's a pretty good bit of people. So technically, our, our name is the Ridge Community Church, but that's a mouthful, so we just say the Ridge Church all the time, right? And we just call it the Ridge uh, mo most often. But our technical name is, is the Ridge Community Church, and we wanted that word community in there because the church is not just at this location of 157 LaSalle Road. Like our church is, it goes beyond that. I don't know if you know this or not also, but we actually have Ridge churches, Ridge community churches all over the place. We have Ridge Community Churches in Clinton. We have Ridge Community Churches in Coalfield. We have them in Rocky Top. We have them in Kingston. We have them in Morgan County. We have them here in Oak Ridge. Did you know that we had those churches all over the place? Y'all didn't know that. Do you know why we have those churches all over the place? Because when you leave here, you're the church. Gotcha. <laughs> right? Like wherever you go, wherever you go, the church goes, because this is not the church. This is a building. This is an address. This is all this is. We have rich community churches in Lenore City, Sweetwater, Oneida. Do you know that we have them in Oneida? Kentucky, Ohio, wherever you're watching online. Like, that's where the church is. Wherever you are is where the church is. Wherever you go is where the church is goes. You are Ridge community. Even if you just tune in to watch every week, the church is where you are. And so for the next 12 months, we're going to use Dollar Club money to fund your Go projects, to help you meet the needs that you see and to impact the things that move you. And so maybe you're, you're wondering if you're supposed to do a Go project. Maybe if you were here last week or you've been watching online and you've heard these messages, or maybe today's the first day that you've heard this message and you're, maybe you want to know more, but maybe you're wondering, am I supposed to do a Go project? Let me answer that question for you. I, I prayed about it for you, and Jesus said, yes, you are supposed to go and do a Go project. So you don't even have to pray about it. Like, am I supposed to do it? The answer there is yes. I've already prayed about it. You're good to go. He's given you the green light. But what you may be wondering is, A, what am I supposed to do? And B, where am I supposed to do it? And then C, this, is, this may be, and this is what we're really going to focus on here today, is 
can I do it? Can I do it? Like, not, not, not just am I supposed to do it, but, but can I actually do it? And so I, I want to read to you about an event where some people saw a need, it broke their heart, and they did what they could and should do about it. So Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 17. Here is uh, an event with, with Jesus early on in his ministry. It says this. Uh, it'd be good if I actually turn the page. It's on page 927 in my Bible. I don't know if it's 927 in your Bible. But this is what it says. It says, On one of those days, while he, talking about Jesus, when Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and also from Jerusalem. And so what's happening here is there's, been, there's a lot of people, not just Pharisees and other uh, religious teachers, but just people in general, they're all coming around to listen to Jesus teach, and there's a lot of them. And it says this, it says, and the Lord's power to heal was in him. And that's just a, a line that uh, I love that Luke uh, puts in there for us to say, hey, Jesus, there, there was this power inside of him to do, like, he, he was just on a roll this day, is what he's, what he's saying here. And it says this, it says, just then some men carrying on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, came. They tried to bring him in and set him down before him. Since they could not find a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof, lowered him on the stretcher, threw the roof tiles into the middle of the crowd before Jesus. Now imagine this scene for just a moment. Jesus is inside of this house. He's teaching. The house is full of people. The outside of the house is full of people. These homes were not very big in the first place, and so it's jam-packed full of people. They were not social distancing, but they were in there together, right? They were all in there. They were all outside of the house. There is no. There was no way easily to get to where Jesus was. And so here are these men, these, these friends, we, we think that they are, but they're these friends of this, this man who is paralyzed, who can't walk. And they have him on a mat, and they're like, we've got to get him to Jesus. But there's, the crowd is too big, what do we do? And so what they do is they work their way through the crowd, and the crowd is so thick that it's so tight in there, they can't actually get into the house, and so they think, you know what, we're going to do whatever it takes to get our friend to Jesus. Let's get up on the roof, open it up, and we'll drop him down in front of Jesus. Could you imagine that scene? Like, could you imagine just sitting in your house, you know, having dinner with some friends or hanging out or whatever, and the, the tiles start falling down? The ceiling starts, you know, crumbling before you, and all of a sudden a hole opens up, and there's a couple of faces looking down at you? And then they lower somebody down in front of you? I mean, could you imagine the scene? That's exactly what's taking place right here. And, and what do we see from, from these men? What do we see from these friends bringing their friend to Jesus? Well, you see desperation. You see de desperation. We don't, we don't know a lot about the friends, but we see that they are moved by the fact that they have a friend who has a deep need in his life, and they're going to do whatever it takes to get him in front of Jesus. It goes on, verse 20, it says, I love this, it says, seeing their faith. Now, don't miss this. This is really important. If you miss this, you miss the whole point of this passage of Scripture. Well, one of the main points of this passage of Scripture. It says, seeing their faith. Not the faith of the paralyzed man, but the faith of the friend who's bringing the paralyzed man. It says, seeing their faith, Jesus said, friend, your sins, talking to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Now think about this for a moment. I, I, I have to imagine in my own mind that his friends are like, yeah, uh, wait, 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 Jesus, um, you're forgiving his sins. That, that, that's great and all, but that's not actually why we brought him here to you. I don't know if you can tell or not, but our boy can't walk. And that's why we actually brought him to you. But you're going to forgive his sins? You see, Jesus, Jesus actually gives him exactly what he needs most. What he needs most, and that is a changed heart through the forgiveness 
of sins. And we'll talk more on that in a bit. But it says, seeing their faith. These friends have shown Jesus their faith with action. With action. That, that word seeing is, is really, really important. Uh, important. They, they, di- they didn't just simply say to their friend, hey, you know what? Hey, Jesus loves you, and here's my favorite verse. I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, you know, now go be well, right? Like they didn't say, they didn't just say that to their friend. What did they do? They were so desperate to get their friend in front of Jesus, they climbed up on a roof. I don't know about you, I don't like roofs. Like, I'm not good on a roof. I've told y'all the story before. I've literally killed myself on a roof once before. It's not fun being on a roof, in my opinion. But they climb up on a roof, and they start to take the tiles down and lower their friend down. They actually put action to their faith. And it says Jesus saw their faith and their action there, there, there was an action that came out of their faith. They didn't just talk about it. They didn't just, just simply tell their friend about Jesus. It's like, no, 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 no. You have to experience Jesus. So we're going to do whatever it takes to get you in front of him. How many of you know that, that your faith requires action? Think about that for a moment. Your faith requires action. James, you don't have to turn there, but in James chapter 2, this is what James says about our faith and action and how they are linked together, inseparable actually. That's a better way to say it. Faith and action are actually inseparable. And this is what James says. He says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works. You could take that word works and turn it into action. He says, he goes on, he says, can such faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, stay warm, and be well fed, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? That's a great question. Think about what James is saying there. He said, what, what good is it to just give people lip service, but don't actually do anything about it? Like actually put action with your faith. He says, in the same way, faith, if it does not have works, listen, this is very strong language. He says, it is dead by itself. James just said, if your faith does not have action, lead to action, it's not real faith. It's dead. He said it's, it's dead on its own by itself. He says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. James says, show me your faith without works and I will show you faith by my works. He says, you believe that God is one. Good. I love that. There's a little sarcasm there, I think, in what James is saying. He's like, he's like, you, he says, you say, uh, he says, you believe that God is one. He's like, congratulations. That's awesome. Good. And he says this. He says, even the demons believe. He's like, you believe? Awesome. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a high five. That's great. It's no, the demons in hell believe. He says, and they shudder, and they shudder. So what, what, is, what is James saying here? James is telling us that action comes from faith. Serving others, the way that we love others, our, our love in action comes out of faith. And so what we believe, listen to this, what we believe in our hearts about Jesus will be reflected in our hands for Jesus. You know, we talk, we talk about believe, right? Belief. I, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Belief and faith are, are, are different. James, again, James just said that belief is not enough because the demons believe, but we need faith. You see, belief is how you perceive reality. It's how you perceive reality. But faith is what you rely on. It's trust plus action plus confidence. 
It's where we draw our strength from. So if I, I believe something is true, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you that it's true, right? I believe that Tennessee is going to be good at football one day. You don't, y'all don't believe that. I don't believe that, right? But I can tell you that, you know? Like, I, I could tell you that, and, and, and maybe you believe that, but, but it's just, I'm just telling you that. But until I see it with my own eyes, I will never have faith in that, at least at this point, right? I'm bitter. Nevertheless, uh, I've, I need to repent of that, I know. But, but, like, but, but that's the difference between faith or, or between belief and, and faith. If I have faith that something is true, I'll show you that it's true with action. And so it says here, it says that Jesus sees their faith. And he says, friend, your sins are forgiven. Look at verse 21. It says, then the scribes and the Pharisees, the scribes and the Pharisees were these religious leaders who were all about the Mosaic law and making sure that Jesus was following the Mosaic law and not, you know, they were trying to catch him in blasphemy all the time. And in fact, they, they think that they do here. They say this, they say, who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? That's really a good question. Who can forgive sins but, but God alone? This is interesting, and, and so don't, don't miss this either, because there, there is in our, our culture a belief that, that Jesus never claimed to be God. Like a lot of a, a lot of scholars, uh, so-called scholars and and um, armchair theologians would say, yeah. So here's the big problem with the Jesus of the Bible uh, and him being God. He never actually claimed to be God. So how do we know that he was God? Well, in a roundabout way, this was Jesus actually claiming to be God. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right. Well. Winner, winner, dos bros, chicken bowl, dinner. Like, Jesus was saying, yes, yes, I can forgive sins because I am God. Only God can forgive sins and his sins are forgiven. That's what Jesus was saying. He's like, his sins are forgiven. And so the implication of what Jesus is saying here is clear. He is saying this is his claim, one of a few claims that he makes in the New Testament where he says that he is God without saying that, hey, I'm God. Because if he would have just said, hey, by the way, who can forgive sins? I can because I'm God. They would have had him killed on the spot. And so listen to what happens next. It says, 22, it says, but perceiving their thoughts. Now, I don't know if you ever think about things like this, but that's kind of scary, right? It didn't say Jesus heard their thoughts. It said Jesus perceiving their thoughts, which is a reminder to all of us that he knows our hearts and what's in there, right? He says, Jesus replied to them, why are you thinking this in your hearts? And he goes on, he says, which is easier? To say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your stretcher, and go home. Jesus is using some, you know, Jedi mind trickery here, right? He's saying, he says, of course, just saying your, your sins are forgiven is easier to say than get up and walk. And if, if that's all he did and said, it couldn't really be verified on the spot, right? Like nobody would have known. It's like, oh, there's this crazy guy out there and he's walking around telling people that their sins are forgiven. But I mean, who knows? I mean, only God can actually forgive sins. You know what else only God can do? Heal somebody who's never been able to walk a day in their life. And so Jesus is like, you don't believe me that I can forgive sins and that only God alone can forgive sins? Watch this. Hey, get up and walk. It says the man gets up and he walks. And he walks. Not only is his sins forgiven, which is what he actually needed most, then he gives him what he wanted to by giving him healing to get up 
and walk. And then 25, it says, immediately he got up before them, picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God, wouldn't you? Then everyone was astounded and they were giving glory to God and they were filled with awe and said, we have seen incredible things today. This sermon, you know, here we could we could focus on, you know, uh, about what what we want versus what we need. You know, the, the paralyzed man, he, he wanted to be healed. His friends brought him to Jesus to be healed. And, and Jesus first gives him what he needs before giving him what he he wants. It's just a reminder to us that we need to trust Jesus to give us what we need over what we may want. And often our deepest desires don't match our deepest needs. But Jesus, Jesus restored him to God, and that is what he needed most. It's what, it's what we all need most, forgiveness of our sins. And we can focus on that, and then we do a whole sermon on that, but we'll put that in the series, other sermons for other times. But what I want to focus on today here is just verse 20 for these last few moments that we have together. The, the verse 20. Where Jesus says, he says, seeing their faith, seeing their faith. So the faith of of this man's friends. I love that Jesus calls out the faith of the friends because I think that it shows us the kind of passion and faith. The kind of passion and faith that we should have for those around us to do whatever it takes to get them to see Jesus. These friends saw the need and it moved them to action and they leveraged what they had and took advantage of an opportunity to serve their friend and ultimately get him to Jesus. You see, the people that you and I may encounter while we serve or, or even as we gather here on Sundays, their faith, maybe, maybe even your faith, may, may be so weak and shattered that they need to see the faith of others like ourselves to help get them to Jesus. That, that people, uh, imagine that for a moment. Don't let that put pressure on you in any way, but just imagine for just a moment that the faith that you have, the faith that I have, can be healing to other people. Can be something that, that speaks to other people. To believe for them that if they'll just encounter Jesus, that they'll, that Jesus, that he'll give them what they need most and maybe even give them what they want to. Listen, church, uh, don't make any mistake about this. Dollar, Dollar Club Go is not just a way for us to do some good, to do some good things and to serve some people. It's not just about that. Dollar Club Go is a way for us to get people to see Jesus. My desire is that when we serve others, not only will they see the heart of Jesus in us, but we'll get to pray for them and, and, and tell them that, that we're doing this because of what Jesus has done for us. We're not doing it because we want pats on the back. We're not doing it because we're trying to get more people to come to our church. We're not doing it because we want everybody to know about Ridge Church. Like That, that may happen. If Jesus wants to do that, that's fine. That's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because we want to carry, the, the, wh- whoever needs Jesus the most, carry them and drop them through a roof of a house and get them in front of Jesus by way of serving. And by the moving of the Holy Spirit that people may ask to know more about that or, or that they'll want to see more of that themselves. So, so maybe they'll come and see for themselves. Sir, listen, serving people without getting them to see Jesus is just called community activism. That's it. Serving people and getting them to see and experience Jesus is called being a Christ follower. And so I want us to be tear the roof off kind of people when it comes to serving others and getting them to see Jesus. To believe that anything is possible if we can get people to see Jesus, to experience Jesus. And I believe that these friends, they they thought that if they could get their friend to Jesus, that anything would be possible for him. So why not do whatever it takes? Why not do whatever it takes? You see, every person in this room and, and, and even online, every person in here can do a Go project. 
can do a dollar club go project. It, it, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're in elementary school or middle school or high school or college or working a job or career, stay at home mom, stay at home dad, watching online. Like it doesn't matter who you are. Like every person here can do a dollar club go project. And in fact, you can't, it's not that you can do one. Like we want you to do one. And so all you have to do is answer these three questions. And we've talked about these three questions for the last three weeks, but I want them to be seared onto our hearts because I want us to be paying attention to the answers to these questions. And, and the first question is, 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 what is, what is the need that you see? What is the need that you see? These friends, these friends had a very defined need. They needed to get their friend to Jesus. They needed to get their friend to Jesus and, and needs should be easy to see if we just open our eyes. Just like I said before, like they are all around us. We can't, we can't walk this earth with our heads down, ignoring the needs around us. Like they are there. And we can't ignore them. So we, we need to, to look beyond our own needs to see the needs around, around us. And so what needs... What needs do you see around you? What needs do you see in your neighborhood? What needs do you see in your workplace? What needs do you see in your school? What needs do you see amongst your friend group? What needs do you see just in the community in general that, that, that maybe just moves you? Which is the second question that we have to answer. Not only do we have to look for needs around us, what needs do you see? But the second question is, is, is what moves you to action? What breaks your heart? What are you passionate about? Full disclosure, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a crier at movies at dumb things. Like I know my wife has probably caught me like dropping a tear every now and then. But I will cry at the dumbest things. The Braveheart speech, you know, the part where he's like, Freedom. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. You know, Star Wars opening music. God, come on. If that if that doesn't move you, you check your heart. Tony Stark dying. Oh, come on. If you're uh, stop. If you hadn't seen it yet, it's been out for like four years. Seriously. <laughs> if I ruin that for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> if, that, but the, if that doesn't move you, you're just heartless. Like, so like weird, weird things move me, right? But, but that's the point, is they may move me, and there, there are other things, like real things that actually matter that move me, but there are real things around you that move you that may not move me. That's the point. That's why we're doing Dollar Club Go projects is because there are things in this world that move you. There are things in this world that you are passionate about. There are things in the world that you see that I don't see that don't move me, but they move you. And so that's why we're, we're scattered all over this place. We're scattered all over the place. And so it only makes sense for us to do these projects wherever we are in the things that you see and the things that move you. These friends, they, they were so moved by the need that they saw, so they did something about it. And, it, and listen, it, it wasn't easy. It, it couldn't have been easy to, to carry this man up on a roof. It couldn't have been easy to... to uh, pull away the, the tiles and the mud and everything that, that this roof was covered by and then to lower this man down. It couldn't have been easy to do that. But they had the attitude of whatever it takes. They, they saw a need. They were moved by this need. And they said, you know what? We're going to do whatever it takes to meet the need. Are you, am I, are we, are we whatever it takes kind of people? They didn't just talk about it, they did it. And so what, what is it that moves you? What moves you? What do you see? What need do you see and what moves you? And then last but not least, number three, what do you have? 
What opportunities are in front of you? What do you have in your hands? What resources are at your fingertips? Who do you know that can help you, that can give you an opportunity? It's not as hard as it sounds because we all have something to offer. Like every single one of us has something to offer. The friends, they, they had a desire and they had an opportunity and they had some strength to do what needed to be done. But you know what they had most? Jesus called it out. They had faith. They had faith. Seeing their faith. Not the faith of the paralyzed man, but the faith of these men that Jesus saw. Because listen, Jesus wasn't no dummy. He wasn't no fool. He knew that the house was crowded. He knew it wasn't going to be easy to get in there. He knew that, that these men climbed up on a roof. He knew how hard it was. But it says, he said, seeing their faith, he said, friend, because of your faith, his sins are forgiven. Because of your faith, I'm going to do something amazing. Because of the action that you have given. Because of the thing that you've done. I'm going to do something amazing that everybody's going to see. That everybody's going to get to experience. What do you have that you can put into action? God might just see your faith. Listen, God might just see your faith and do something totally amazing that, that blows your mind. And so what could you do? What could you do? Um, we've already gotten a few people saying that, you know, here, here's the Go project that we want to do. I, I, I started mine, you know, a week or two ago, and I'm going to continue doing that, given the, the four Anderson County Award. But, but here's a few ideas just to get your, get your mind going. Like, what, what can you do? What could you do? Uh, you've probably got better ideas than this, but, but here's a few that I thought of. Like, like you could do a, a backpack drive for a local school. Like you, you could do that. You could get together with some friends, a small group, uh, whatever, and you can, like, when school gets back in session, like, you can start on that now. Like, don't wait until it's time for school to start. Like, get started on it now. You could do a backpack drive for a local stu- school. You, you could do a, a, a parade and, and pizza for an assisted living home. Right? You think about the people that are in assisted living homes and, and they can't get out and then there's not many people that can go visit them right now. What if you did a parade? You got people with cool cars and cool things and you just drove through their parking lot and they all waved at you and you waved at them and like how fun would that be well, i think it'd be fun so if you want to do it like let me know I'll, I'll i'll come join you you could uh you could do you could do bicycles for for a local group or or neighborhood like Use Dollar Club Go money to, to do a fundraiser to get bicycles to, to give away to people that need bicycles. Uh, what if you did birthday cakes for families in need and you partnered with a local school and said, hey, you know what, I know there's a lot of families in the school that, that have needs and sometimes they don't always get to celebrate birthdays the way that they want. We want to provide them a birthday cake every time there's a birthday. What if you did that? You can bake a cake, maybe. I can't, but maybe you can. See, that's, see you see what I'm saying? Like, I can't do that, but you can do that. Some of you can do that. Um, you could do a fundraiser to help, you know, a local organization or family. You could use Dollar Club Go money to, to get the things needed, supplies, and to put on a big fundraiser to, to multiply that money, to get more money to give to a local organization. You could do uh, birthday cards and balloons for nursing home residents. Like, get a bunch of the, the nursing homes around the area and, and find out when people's birthdays are and, and write them a birthday card and, and drop those off and some balloons and flowers or whatever. You could use Dollar Club money for that. Or you could, you could stock up one of the essential needs closets at a local school. You know, here we have, uh, one of the ministries that we have here is we have clothing closets and essential needs closets, and we're trying to get one in every school in Anderson County, and I think we're, we're getting close to, to seeing that done. And so you could raise money to, to stock up some of the, the supplies that go in those closets. You could send flowers to people experiencing losses in their life. Deaths, miscarriages, bad news. Even good news. People like flowers with good news. You could do that. You could, you could put together snack baskets for hospital waiting rooms or snack baskets for, for the staff rooms at, at hospitals. Angela, that'd be, we, you'd do that. Right? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
You could, you could put together hygiene kits for, for the homeless. You could find a way to serve teachers in our local schools. You could, you could maybe do a fundraiser for someone or, or a group in need. Or, or what if you did a, a reverse parade just for the fun of it, right? You know what a reverse parade is? It's where you set up the things and everybody drives by you. <laughs> it's the lazy parade, <laughs> right? You could do that. You could do a, a lazy parade. Why? Oh, why not? We need parades. It'd be a good time to have a parade. Like, we all need some joy and some good news, right? Just do a parade. You could just call it the whatever parade or, you know, just because parade, whatever, right? You could do these things, and these, these are just some things, but what can you do? Can you organize? Can you sew? Can you make things? Do you know people? Can you mow lawns? Can you cook? Are you an artist? What, what can you do? You can leverage the things that you have to serve people around you, to meet a need for the things that move you. Who can you serve? You could serve military families that are deployed. You could serve foster families. You could serve whole neighborhoods. You could serve a a, a nonprofit, a a school, a classroom, a friend, the elderly. Like you name it. You can you can serve them, your coworkers. It's it's the need that you see. It's what moves you. It's leveraging what you have. And so what could Jesus do? What could Jesus do when he sees your faith? It's really easy to apply for Dollar Club Go. And, and yes, we want you to apply for this because we, we have money that we want to put into your hands, some seed money that, that we want to be able to give you to, to help you get started with these projects. And so all you have to do is uh, you just go to our website, richchurchonline.com, select Give, and then you'll see Dollar Club Go. And you select Dollar Club Go, and there's like three or four questions there that you just need to answer, fill in, and, and submit that. And, and it goes to a group of people, not me, but it goes to another group of people who will look that over and, and you know, green light you for, for that money and, and even help you, maybe give you some ideas to maybe help you get started if you have some questions, things like that. But it's a really simple thing that you can do, and there's been some people already uh, do that. And so we're ready, like, and maybe you're not ready, maybe you want to think about it and, and take a look and say and think okay what is the need what it, what moves me and what can I do maybe you want to think about that a little bit and that's okay but you just go to richchurchonline.com select give and then dollar club go and you'll see that there I'll close with this Luke chapter 5 26 the response of the people who who saw what happened here listen to what it says it says, then everyone, Jesus heals the man, he forgives the sins, he heals the man. I mean, they saw all of this happen. It says, then everyone was astounded, and they were giving glory to God. And they were filled with awe and said, we have seen incredible things today. Church, is that not what we want the world's narrative of the church to be? not what it's become. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. God, we thank you for, um, God, how you've just spoken to our hearts. God, we pray that, God, we pray that, that wherever we're hearing this today, God, that, God, that you move us to action. God, that you open our eyes to the needs that are around us. God, that you remind us of of what it is that that moves us, God. God, that you show us again what it is that that we have, uh, maybe an opportunity or a skill or or something that that we can do or someone that we know, God, the, the connections that only you can put in place, God, that you bring these things together. God, so that we can, we can meet these needs. And God, that, that you, would, you would fill us with faith. And your word reminds us, God, that, that if we lack in faith, God, that we can ask you and God, you will give to us. 
And so, Father, if we, if we lack in faith, God, fill us with faith. To not just believe that you are who you say you are, God, but to know that you are who you say you are. And God, that when we put action with our faith, you will do incredible things. Not so that people will see us, but so that people see you and who you are and all that you can do. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray.
thank you guys for coming this morning. We, we're going to approach our time of giving now, and we'll have some ushers uh, waiting in the back. But you can also give online and at ridgegive.com. And, and when we think about giving, um, really the key, right, we heard quite a bit about it today in this message, but the key is about giving generously and joyously. And the two actually work together. They work together like this, like Jesus modeled his giving, his generosity, his love, his compassion actively, right? So our goal as a church is to steward what is given with the most wisdom as, as possible, right? And we, we try to honor that. But giving is more than just on a Sunday morning. It's actually when we go out, like, like you were talking about. It's the hands, right? The reflection of the heart living out in the hands when we go out. And the only thing I would say on that is the simplest acts can make some of the deepest differences. If you don't believe it, try an act of kindness this week. Listen, people all around our community are waiting for Christians to step into this void and be the difference maker, to live generously, to love generously. And when we do that, I promise you, it changes lives. And I can say that with full confidence because Jesus, in so many instances, just took simple acts of kindness to speak to someone that others wouldn't have spoken to. And we have so much to thank him for and seeing that action lived out. So here's what I would ask you to do, to give as you feel led, as, as God would have called you to. We, our goal is to steward it wisely. But then when we leave this place, let us be generous with our love, our time, and with everything else to someone else the rest of this week. I promise if you do, you won't regret it. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for my family. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. You've transformed everything. That's what you do. You're a God that changes things. I pray that you would bless this time of giving, that it would glorify you, but that we would also have the wisdom to use this most wisely, to magnify our impact, to, to multiply, and to, to make a difference in our city, in our community, in our family. God, change this city through your spirit. Change us through your spirit. Help us to be faithful. And we ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen.